In this example, we're going to do a problem involving Coulomb's Law. Uh, this example says that we have two identical small charged spheres, each having a mass of 3 by 10 to the minus 2 kilograms, and they hang in equilibrium shown below. If the length of each string is 0.15 meters and the angle is 5 degrees, find the magnitude of the charge on each sphere. Now this is a problem in which we need to draw a free body diagram. It's told me it's in equilibrium, so I know the sum of the forces equals zero. I'm going to take this particular object, it doesn't matter which one you do, but I'm going to take this one and draw its free body diagram. So I have the object isolated. I have weight applied down. I have a tension force applied like this, T. and because these both have the same charge, call that charge Q, this charge is applying a repulsive force in this direction, call that F sub E, upon the second little pit ball. And then I need to have a coordinate system. I'll draw that as my coordinate system. So this is X, this is Y. This angle here is theta. That angle is the same as this angle here, so that angle is theta. What do I know? I know that the sum of the forces in X is zero. I know the sum of the forces in Y is zero. I know that because it says equilibrium. The forces in X, I have Fe minus, I have this side, which is the opposite side of this tension, so minus T sine theta, and that's equal zero. I'm going to solve that for T sine theta. That's equal to Fe. I'll call that equation one. I don't know the tension. I would like to eliminate the tension, so I've isolated this trig function in order to do that in a later step. In the y direction, there's no component in y here. There is a component of the tension. It's this side here, which is the adjacent. So that means cosine, t cosine theta. And then this weight is minus w. So I'm going to isolate, again, the trig function with the t. And that's equal to w. And that's equation 2. To eliminate T, I simply divide equation 1 by equation 2. So divide 1 by 2 to eliminate the unknown tension. When you have transcendental equations as trig functions, do not try substitutions and such. It tends to make the problem worse. Isolate the trig function. If you want to get rid of the thing in front of the trig, divide them. If you want to get rid of the trig function, remember to square this side so you get sine squared. Square this side so you get cosine squared and add them together because sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So in this case, I divide. I eliminate the t. I get sine theta over cosine theta. And I get Fe over W. Well, that's just the tan of theta, sine over cosine. And on the other side, Fe, I get K, the charge, Q squared, over the distance. Now, let's see what the distance is. Well, the distance is this thing here. I'll call this side A and that distance of the triangle A. So this distance is 2A. So it's divided by 2a squared. And on the bottom, mg. Now it says for me to solve for q. OK. So kq squared is equal to 2a squared times mg times tangent of theta. So q squared is 2a squared mg tan theta. All of that divided by k. Now I've got to find this a. So let's, how am I going to find that a? 
Well, when I look back up here, assuming that I can ignore the size of this ball compared to the length of the string, then I can consider this length of the string to be the hypotenuse of a triangle here. There's L, and there's the opposite side. So the opposite side divided by L is the sine of theta, or A is L sine theta. So that's just trigonometry. But A is L sine theta. So if I put that in and take the square root, I get 2L sine theta times the square root of mg over k times the tan of theta. I have everything I need now. I just need to do some plugging some numbers in. So q, by the way, I did take the square root. So actually, this could be plus or minus. Either one would work. Negative charges would both repel each other. Positive charges would both repel each other. So all it says is, can I find the magnitude? It does not ask me what the specific charge is. So I'm just going to give them a magnitude, a positive number at the end. So looking at the magnitude, I have 2 times the length. I need to find the length. I have to go up in the problem statement earlier. Let's see, the length was 0.15 meters. So I need to put that down here. 0 0.15 meters times the sine of the angle. The angle, I believe, was 5 degrees. Yes, it was. 5 degrees times the square root. On the bottom here, 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. On the top, I have a tan of 5 degrees. I have 9.8 meters per second squared. And I have m. So let me see. m, m was 3 times 10 to the minus 2 kilograms. 3 by 10 to the minus 2 kilograms. And of course, we need to check the units. A kilogram times a meter per second squared is a newton. So this is going to produce a coulomb per meter. And then I'm going to multiply by a meter, and I'll have coulombs. So everything is working out as it should. Now I have to, of course, punch this number into a calculator. So 2 times 0.15 times sine of 5 times square root. 3 second e to the minus 2 times 9.8 times 10 of 5 divided by 9 second e to the 9. Punch all that and I get 44 nanocoulombs. Assuming I did that right, 44.2 nanocoulombs. There's very little in this problem that's new. The majority of this problem tests old stuff. Do you know how to draw a free body diagram? Do you know what it means to be in equilibrium? Can you apply want half? The only thing that's actually new is the equation that we substituted in right here. This was new. KQ squared over R squared. That was new. Everything else about the problem is from earlier in the semester. So did you understand the stuff early in the course about the things that you needed to back in mechanics? We're going to use all that stuff, work and energy and linear momentum, angular momentum and so forth. And if you haven't mastered that, then you're going to have trouble because it's all going to come back and be tested. All right, that finishes this problem. I'll see you on another video.